What does it mean to design an emotion? What does sadness look like? Happiness, anxiety. How can we express these deep personal feelings outwardly by means of a building? What does this tell us about the power of architecture? These are the questions I endeavor to answer in this series, Designing a Museum. Let's begin. Earlier this year, I stumbled upon an architecture competition organized by Bildner. Now, Bildner is a platform that creates these competitions and allows architects and enthusiasts to share their ideas. What caught my eye was their recurring competition entitled Museum of Emotions. The premise here is to design a museum that showcases two contrasting emotions, one positive and one negative. Now I'm taking on this design challenge as a means to grow within the world of architecture, not having had any formal education. This specific competition is passed already, but I figured why not use the same parameters, the same prompt to create my own building. And so really, I just, I wanna create a memorable idea. What is the idea though? It's very ambiguous right now, but I'm already thinking of using different materials, rough materials versus soft, darker materials versus lighter, contrast in size from large to small or vice versa, a change in view, all of these contrasting elements are coming to my mind. But before diving into the design, I want to do as much research as possible. To get things started, I began researching previous winners. I wanted to see what worked for past entries, but most importantly, the core ideas and values that they have. In addition to studying previous entries, I thought it might be good to learn more about the jury. Now the jury is comprised of 10 brilliant architects with a large body of work. I went through each one and tried to pick apart certain design choices and decisions that maybe I could implement into my own building. The last thing I wanted to research were any current museums that had a similar design ethos as this one, conveying strong emotion. As I did more digging, I was reminded of a course that I took years ago through Harvard EDX. And this was the course on the architectural imagination. Within the course, they mentioned a structure entitled the Cuneo Monument. This building always fascinated me because of the way in which one moves through the space. You walk up these steps and the steps get taller and this way it gets smaller. So basically you're enclosed, enclosed, enclosed. Then there's this release out into the open with a view at perfect eye level facing the horizon. To me, it's just such a strong statement and I wanna incorporate that idea of compression and release into this project. So now I've collected the main pieces. Now it's time to put pen to paper. So to begin, I know that the idea here is to create contrast. We need a positive emotion, right? Positive, and then a negative emotion. And I feel like what would be a nice idea is to start off with the negative emotion and then kind of make your way to the positive emotion, almost like as this cathartic experience. So you're working through the negative to get to the positive. So I'm just kind of, I don't know what I'm doing here, but negative, this is just, that just feels negative to me. I feel like positive is here, qualities here would be dark, cold, maybe a little claustrophobic. This would be light, warm in lighting, or just overall, you know, perception, uh, open. So what if we, what if we had some sort of, if we had some sort of form where we had a box and then we have another of equal size. So it's two uh, volumes, the same shape, and it's just the way in that this one is done is dark. through but I feel like what would be interesting just make this a little bit bigger what I'm visualizing is something maybe like 50 feet we're looking at it from the top in fact let me write that plan maybe we have this small entrance here okay 
So small entrance, small entrance. And again, using that idea of compression and release, maybe there's like, or like this small hallway. So you walk in, you enter, and then it opens. So now it opens up the view, right? But I think it would be interesting if this was like all dark, like it's just this massive void. What if the only way into the positive emotion, because again, this is all, this is all negative. It's dark, it's uh, cold, it's callous. What if there's like a series of steps that kind of take you here? Right, so steps. And there's gotta be some form of like, there's gotta be like a wall here. Like something just very ominous, bringing you into like this open field. And what if there was this big skylight, skylight, pouring the light, and then maybe there's like steps to exit. So it's kind of like this forward progression, right? I kind of want to expand on this idea a little bit more. Let's now take it from the side. So this is our elevation. Let's say this is our first volume. We know that the entrance is about this tall, 50 feet. It's, it feels about right. Got a person here. They walk in and this is just it just goes all the way up. So there's this like moment when they look up and they see nothing. Like it's just nothing. It's just this dark void, very ominous. But then they see steps. Maybe these steps lead the person up to second volume. And now this is open and free. We have that skylight here. It's letting in light. And whatever entrance here, that means there's gonna be light flooding in this way. So it's almost like this beacon of hope for the person that's experiencing this negative emotion. Maybe there's this exit here. Yes, I love this. And maybe this is on stilts because it's light and free. And what I'm picturing is like an open view of the horizon. This could be a solid void or a solid form. Positive and negative emotion. I like this idea. Let's uh, let's bring this to the computer. Now we live in a world where AI is a huge conversation. I think at first I was hesitant to use AI because I guess to me it didn't really feel authentic, didn't feel genuine, like I was the one making the thing, whatever it was. But I think. Now that some time has passed, technology has gotten better, we've seen AI used for good or for worse. I feel like if I can use this technology as a tool, just as a tool, nothing more than that, that it could be helpful to my design process. And so I'm very grateful to have a tool for this project it's called Render AI. Now Render is the sponsor for this video and they're an all-in-one architectural rendering program. What I love about this platform is that you can render from several sources. Text, elevation drawings, sketches from a 3D base, and images. So you can pull from all of these different sources to create your finished body of work, or at least for me, an iteration, an idea of what the work might look like. You have complete control over the variables such as style strength, color strength, and the AI's overall creativity. I've been using the program for about a month now, and I must say that it's very intuitive. It's easy to learn, it's easy to navigate, and the finished results are very beautiful. What I love is just how reputable this platform is. It's even been used by Bjarke Ingels group. If you'd like to give Render a try, you can get 10% off your subscription by using my code JM10 at checkout. Thank you, Render AI, for sponsoring this video. With that in mind, we're gonna bring our sketch into the program and bring it to life. This is the sketch right here. 
I put the strength at about 75%. I put Tadao Ando in the description because I just love his work with concrete. Uh, he is a master at his craft and he's done several museums before. In fact, I included a picture of the Chichu Museum, which just plays with concrete and light so nicely. So I'm excited to see how the program takes the sketch and these ideas. Oh wow, yeah, I absolutely love this. I love how it interpreted the facade with concrete. I think a small issue, and it's more on my end, is that I didn't specify that this was a cross-sectional uh, elevation. So I think it's interpreting it as just a normal facade. But besides that, uh, it handles the idea very well and it shows uh, the two concrete forms so nicely, the steps very nicely, and the scale is, is a bit small, but overall pretty good. The lighting is beautiful, and, it, and this is, again, just the idea. This is just to get ideas flowing. This is an incredible way to get the ball rolling, to say the least. Absolutely love it. I feel like this has been a strong start to the design process. I think what I've narrowed it down to is posing a question to the viewer. What former things have you experienced up until now? And how do those former things impact the future? My idea here is that an appreciation for the present always means an understanding of the past. And so I've come up with a name for this project, Forma. Forma is the Latin word for former, which basically sums up the idea of this project. I want you to walk through this space reflect on where you've come from, the things you've been through, and have this contrast of emotions into this reveal. I can already see this wide open space in my head. And I think sketching the ideas out have helped me to visualize this maybe more ambiguous concept a little bit more clearly. Of course, I'm sure it's gonna look and feel uh, completely different as the project progresses. Good design is adaptive and flexible. At least I think it should be. I'm excited to see the evolution, what sticks and what doesn't, what epiphanies I have along the way. But until then, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.